you for a short initial prayer, okay? I would like to invite you to close your eyes briefly and let's get in touch with our hearts. Please shift your attention to your heart. If you want to, you can place your hand on your heart, but not necessary. Try to feel your heart. Now find that place, that special place of gratitude in your heart. The gratitude for being alive, for being here. Allowing this feeling of gratitude to take over your whole body like a warm blanket, releasing peace, and gratitude. Connecting you and each heart here present tonight with the love that exists everywhere in the universe bringing back to us the peace of mind faith and the strength to overcome any difficulties or challenges we might have. We invite all the good spirits, our guardian angels, to inspire us and to help us to understand a little bit more of our spiritual development. Thank you and so be it. So be it. And um, so you guys know we're live on Facebook, so anything you say can and will be used against you. <laughs> and, and just for the people out there, um, we've been reading this book, What is Spiritism? by Alan Kardec. Um, and we're actually getting towards the end of it, slowly but surely. Um, and it's, you know, it's a great book. I've been learning a lot from it myself. Um, funny that uh, even a lot of spiritists, like I've never heard of this book. You know, Isn't it fun? And they're, they're like, what are you talking about? Alan Kardec wrote another thing. He only wrote five books. I'm like, well, we got this one. It's like a, a short version. Um, <laughs> so and if, you're, if you're coming here for the first time, uh, um, if you haven't read it already, you know, it's, it's not really, you, you, you'll still find you can partic participate in the discussion. So yes. it's not really, uh, it's, you know, but we do encourage everybody who comes, if, if you, you know, if you like what we're doing here, you know, pick up a copy. We also um, have it available for download on uh, Google Drive. So if you want to get the PDF and read it, um, it's we have it for you know you can you can get it for free. Um, so what did we talk about last week? Um, we were item two. Yeah, we, yeah, we were. On, we, we only really got through item one and two. Um, mm -hmm. That sounds like me. I would do that yeah, too. So. <laughs> so yeah. So you got a part of us, it's like somebody was accusing me of being too like stuck to my cell phone, but I'm like, no, I'm trying to do something for the, <laughs> it's for this group for, on Facebook, so <laughs> it's not, it's not because I'm do, one of those, I'm usually one something. of those people who turn my phone off and, and uh, like pay attention to what I'm doing, but in this case, it's like I have to, I have to do that. <laughs> so, uh, so on item two, we were talking about, um, we were actually t kind of talking about when people are come to a spirit center for the first time um, and expect to see uh, like spirit manifestations right away, or you know have some kind of uh, notions. And actually, I was bringing up the idea of like how do we, um, what do we do for for new people when they when they come? So um, that's kind of what we were I don't know was, uh, debating last week, um, but. 
So this week we're starting again on item three. So I, I think I'll just read item three because it's short and then we can kind of take it from there. Or if somebody else wants to read it, I don't know. Anybody else feel like reading? Mm -hmm. I love the sound of my own voice, but... <laughs> well, then read it. Scott, read. go ahead. Yeah, please. Read it so that, you know, my friend can oh. hear it too. Um, I'll have my glasses. All right, let me uh, give oh, a shot here. <laughs> <laughs> Even though certain phenomena may you want be mine? induced... No, you good? You yeah, good? Sorry. Speak up a little bit too. Even though certain phenomena may be induced because they result from free intelligence, they are never at our complete disposal, no matter who we are, and whoever attempted to obtain them at will would be demonstrating either their ignorance or their bad faith. We must wait for the phenomena and understand, understand them as they happen. And quite frequently, it is at the moment when it is least expected that their most interesting and most conclusive incident occurred. Persons who seriously want to learn must therefore persons who want to learn must therefore approach this subject like all others with patience and perseverance. And do and do everything that needs to be done. Otherwise they would be better off not to concern themselves with the matter. All right. Sorry for the thing. Oh yeah, it's a little harder than you have my thanks. Here. And the, yeah, the guy who, who made the PDF was just like, I don't know what he was thinking. You know, just, <laughs> right. These are all curled. Like, <laughs> so, this was not bad. <laughs> so, um, so what we're talking about is, um, let me put the spin on this. Like, like when I read this, it reminded me of before I found Spiritus Center that I would go to these like mediumistic meetings and they would be in like large public places like that they would kind of set like okay we're going to meet here in this night like at this spiritual bookstore or something like that and then they would like call spirits on demand you know whatever spirit you want your you know your cat your your grandmother um your ex-husband you know alive or dead or whatever you know and what whoever you ask for and you'll get you'll get a message you know and just um uh have to put ten dollars in the basket Right. That's, bas and that's basically kind of like the way the meetings are. Not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, for the people that are that are doing that. Um, if you are in California, it's kind of more expensive than. Oh yeah. Ten the price actually went up since then, since I, oh. since I left. Um, <laughs> so it used to be a love donation, and now it's like a like a give it donation. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so, but it's tough. It's a, it's tough to make a business out of. A, right. Out of it's. I mean, that's really what we're talking about, too. I'm kind of being, like, facetious, but it's tough to make a business out of um, somebody, you know, ex I want to say exploiting somebody's intelligence that's not your own. And what we're trying to say is that nobody can can actually call on a spirit and force them to come because of the um, the principle of free will. It's a, it's a divine law. But, you know, if a, if a spirit is, is just like one of us that's passed on the other side, and we have our own free will that we can decide what we want to do, what's in our best interest. A spirit can make the same decision too. Um. We we can also put that in our life, like the, in our reality. If we try to talk with someone that it's a, a very serious person that has a um, uh, like a scientist or a researcher how easy it would be to f talk with that person versus someone that does nothing in their lives, that it's just hanging out everywhere. It's the same thing. It would be easier to speak with that one that is hanging out doing nothing than with someone that is very busy uh, and it's doing, it's working on a project or something more interesting. And, and the scientists might approach it from a scientific perspective and say, like, okay, if I take um, with like vinegar and baking soda and mix them together, it forms a reaction, you know, and I can do that anytime I want. So why can't I call a spirit anytime I want? And why can't I? Mm -hmm. If this is a natural law, 
how come I can't you know, just induce it at, at will? Um, well, you, you can. So. <laughs> you can, but what's going to be? Just like you, you usually say, evoke a, a rock and it will talk to you. Yeah. I evoke a rock. If I evoke this chair right now, right here, it will talk to us through someone. Yeah, you should probably explain a little bit more about that. Oh, what that means. Oh, to evoke, it's to try to have a communication with this chair. Like if it, this chair had a spirit, a life, an intelligence. If, if we do this, if we were in a mediumistic meeting, there are people that do that with the Ouija board or all the other things. And if we would try to communicate with this chair, there will come a spirit that will say, Yes, I am the chair. So we talked about that last week, with yeah. the dynamics of receiving the right message or the purity of the message, right. and both the receiver the medium has to be in a certain state uh, for their work, and then yeah. the, the spirit themselves would have to be, have their free will to engage. And like anything in life, it so demands effort, also. time, exercise, like anything in life. Is there anything in this life that if we want to become a, a master or learn or become an athlete is there anything like doing nothing we will become an expert in that thing no it, and if if it in an ordinary life it's like this in the spiritual life wouldn't be different it's an extension i mean we are an extension but it's an extension Steve, you might want to rewind a minute to kind of a summary of the last, right? So as we're talking about um, this in um, step three, I don't no know if need. everybody's up to speed. No need, no need actually. Because we, we, I kind of did that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Just yeah, to make sure it's clear. And yeah. also because what he's going to, it's not too different from the last one. What he's touching on. It's really, really like an extension of the last yeah. two. Like yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why actually, because we, we spent like a week. I'm sorry, like not a whole week, but like our whole study group right. about item one, and our whole right. study group about item two. And I'm looking at today, I'm like, are we going to spend our whole group, like group on item three? Or, or I, I don't here. really think so, but you know, yeah. it depends on on um, on what you guys have to say, really. And and by all means, if you if you read the material, if you have your own question, or if it like sparks some kind of interest in you, and you have something like you really want to talk about. Um, um, this stuff, like I've kind of read it, and like actually, I read through it like one time. And I was like, I have nothing to say about any of this stuff, <laughs> you know. But like, luckily, I read it again, and I got like inspired the second time. But um, um but yeah, I mean, I, that's what I, I was gonna say something about what you were saying too. I think it was in the mediums book um, where it really like hit home for me that um, they were trying to invoke the spirit of a character from a play, and so it was like a well-known, like a famous play at the time. Like for us, it would be like. Like when I asked my friend if she would uh, invoke Yoda. Mm, yes. So that's spirit. So the medium. And, and what they said was was yeah they were having like this great conversation with that character and they were talking about all the other characters in the play <laughs> and how their lives had gone. <laughs> and as they as they probed the spirit further, they probably found out that it was actually a spirit who like when it was alive had played that character in a production of that play, oh. and he was just there messing with them. <laughs> You know, and, and that's what I was like. That that's really like a good example when you say like I can invoke this chair, I can invoke right. whatever. It's it's right. just you know right. that um I could see myself doing that on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's like I'm a practical joker, like alive. Like imagine you become a spirit. You're yeah. like not chained to matter. And, and people do all, don't know do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Why not come and say I'm king? <laughs> To evoke means to create, to manifest, to, it's, it's to, to evoke the way that we are saying, it's just to call, it's just calling. We would like to speak with Reggie, to e evoke. Evocation works, actually, it might have been in the Missionaries of the Light, tell me if I'm wrong, or it's in one of the books around this, around, <coughs> around there, where um, Andre Louise visits a funeral, and the people are actually gossiping at the funeral, like the, the, the live people. Um, I don't think it's there. Okay, it's maybe it's the next one. 
And so they're gossiping. And so um, <laughs> what happens is they're gossiping is they're talking about somebody. I don't know if they're talking about the person who had died or talking about somebody else. But as soon as they start talking about them, mentioning their name, that spirit shows up and like hears them saying all these terrible things yeah. about, about them. That's it's true. like so evocation is something. Uh, I mean, that's not really what we're actually. No, it is really what we're talking it is. about. It is. Um, but just to give a little bit of background on it, um, you know, evocation yeah. is is if we were having like a mediums, mediumistic group, which I you have to kind of tell me if I'm wrong. No. That we could sit in in, the, in the, our mediumistic group mm. and we could say like T this week we're going to try to evoke yeah um, yeah Saint Francis or something you know something like that yeah and Kardec we could, we could was try. the method that Kardec was using he was calling a family member of the person they wanted to call to communicate because of who would guess who can guess because of what Saint Anthony. More than that, because of the fluid, the affinity, the the magnetism, the fluid that has connection. When we actually uh, have a relationship with someone, and actually, Heart Math Institute is getting there with the the magnetic field of the heart. When we have a relationship with someone, with anyone, we have those. A magnetic strings that they connect and they nurture each other and we and that's why it hurts so much when you have a relationship and when there is a, a separation it is because it's not only feelings that we have toward that person but we have magnetism going on like like if we had here connections that we don't see now, Heart Math Institute is saying that we the, the magnetic field of the heart is this big and we can connect with the other person and affect another person. If I am feeling irritated here, science is saying that I can affect another person next to me within this field of the heart. So the spirits are saying that we have this connection. When we do this to someone, there is a connection. Mm -hmm. A energetic field of connection as soon as you contact someone you already have a connection with that person so that's why the spirit say you know nurture good feelings positive feelings because if you meet someone and you don't have that good connection with that person you already have the connection there with you and it's gonna you're gonna bring it whatever impressions you have from that person. And, and so probably like if we're having a mediumistic group and we want to have good results, we're hoping to have good results, it, you're more likely probably to be able to invoke somebody that you like have exactly. a good connection with. So you, you have a better chance of success if you're yeah. you know, starting. It is always like this actually. The spirits, they come through affinity as we know. So the communication, uh, the bridge of communication happens when there is affinity. Uh, Divaldo Franco, the uh, Brazilian medium, he says that uh, a spirit shows up and says, I wanted to write this book about, it was a, a scientific topic, and he goes like, what, why do I have to, I have no time to write any book, all my time is taken, please talk with my mentor, Joana de Angelis. And then the spirit spoke with Joana de Angelis, says, okay, while he's sleeping, sit down and put put there something people will help you to write out while he was sleeping the four hours he was sleeping at night so he started to write channeling channels uh, a book about this scientific uh, uh, subject 15 years later a another spirit will come would come through him to write a very important book about that topic so they were training this medium to get familiar with the topic so later on 15 years later he would as familiar with the topic he would be able to be receptive and to uh express the message clearly so you're trying to say that patience and perseverance are important in mediumship <laughs> Just like in all life, in fact, it says it here. I think that's a good point to kind of take the next step. 
and, and, so, I, and I quote, right, um, wherever it went, it says, just like all things, patience and perseverance. <laughs> just like all things. No, it's good. It's, good. it's all good. It's all good. You're gonna get it. No, absolutely. Sorry, Steve. I, so, I cut you off. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it has to do with our topic um, that, you know, because they, they say that um, people who really want to learn have to approach the subject with patience and perseverance. Yeah. I mean, not necessarily 15 years of studying, you know, biology or something. Right, crazy, in his case, it's that's, a... That's like, yeah. when, you know, right. some of us have to learn filmmaking, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, I want to ask you guys if you ever met a medium or someone that channels uh, spirits. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Out of the spiritual center. Yeah, I've seen a few. A channel, yeah? Channeling Aristotle or something like that. They channel. How, how, how did you feel their, uh, this person's energy? Was this person like... Um, it, it didn't feel like it was genuine. It didn't feel... I mean, the, she talked a good talk, but it didn't feel... When the, we asked her specific questions, it didn't um, mm. jive. It, um, yeah, it, it's it's something you have to feel. I, I believe it exists. There is a connection to have that connection with with with, with energy or matter or spirits or mediumship. But um, it has to. Uh, you have to experience and you have to really feel it. Interesting. Well, what was I reading recently too? It might have been in here that the the medium like the mediums who can't really do it or, or whatever maybe it's a spirit that's not really like um like a lower order spirit when they're talking they're trying to pretend that they're a higher order spirit will like always use an overabundance of words and that's what i would see was just like oh, no, no, no. it was just like verbal like diarrhea yeah and it was like there's all kinds of words i had to like look up the dictionary because i'm like where did you find all this stuff and like but it was but it was just like and when you like look at it it's like it's totally meaningless it's just confusing mm -hmm. <laughs> you know but, but mm. it's just like an overabundance of, of words and it's like mm. I've met I've met a few mediums outside of spiritism spiritist movement and I remember one of them it, that person it was a friend of mine that wanted me to visit this medium and it was twenty dollars per person and so I went and uh, this medium was very like irritated while was channeling okay from what I saw it was a genuine medium it was really channeling but not the entire session it was for a while and then after a while the medium was faking it and the personality the the way that the medium was talking to other people it was very like no patience at all. It was irritating and whatever. If you could not make any mistake on your words or interpretation, it was like no. But you don't understand what I'm saying. It was, um, and I observed that nobody thought that mm, this is like there is something wrong here. We came here to be enlightened, to get a message, or to... And then you have this person that was treating like a... It was like a child-parent kind of relationship, you know? Being like very... You I'm know, you little kid, you don't do anything I'm right. I'm authority, you need to listen to me. And yeah, you, you don't do anything <laughs> right. And So when I realized that they're, they're all adults here, like several people, like 15 people, and they were okay with it. I was okay, of course. And I told my friend. But everybody else was okay. So that's what people think about communication with the spirits would be. Of course, I didn't tell them I was a spiritist or anything like that. But... trying to say is like there is a communication with the spirits what are our what do you think what are our basics in this what what do you do we think that this would be what is our knowledge because 
The communications with the spirits does not belong to spiritism or anyone. Communication with the spirits, we've been doing this since the beginning of the creation. Since the man was here on earth, we've been communicating with the spirits. It's a, it's a natural thing. But we are here now, we think we are very civilized and modern, and are we, are we still um, getting into those did Alan, did Alan Carter yes. believe that everyone's a, a potential medium? Yes. Yeah, so we have that ability. We're just yes. not aware of it. Mm -hmm. yes. And some are better than others. More developed. We all have like it in us. I yes. mean, some people, I don't want to say they're not destined, but some people like won't really experience it in, right. in this incarnation. And some people will, and some yeah. people have it and don't know it. So this, yeah. But eventually, we will all have yeah. it. We all have the capacity because this communication exists just like the Heart Math Institute says that my heart communicates with her heart, even if I don't believe it. This is science. The spirits, they say the same thing, that there is a communication going on 24-7. It's up to us to be aware of, to become aware of, but there is a communication very well said. And, and I, I just want to add that sometimes uh, people might have certain experiences in their life or, you know, and they might not mm. acknowledge what's actually happened. Like even in just in dreams, you know, when yeah. you have people in your dreams who, you know, who have passed away and they, and they you, know, you see them and this, this they, they just, yeah. they just write it off as just being like a dream or being, you know, something wrong, but it's actually, you know, this, this is them, yeah. you know, getting some kind of a message from it. And so, and so many other things. I find people that say that they, they are in a bus stop and all of a sudden they have this completely different feelings and they know it does not belong to them. But they cannot explain, they don't know what it is, but then they know that it's something going on in a, a different level other than the physical level, but they they're afraid. Of, a lot of people are afraid to, you know, to move forward and to look for help and to try to see what's going on here. There is a spiritual world. I know, I see, but I, I'm in denial. A lot of people in denial because there are mediums everywhere. Poor, rich, everywhere. Everywhere. And everywhere you look, there's a lot of different information. You know, if you pick That's up true. like a, this, this month's ep, you know edition of Natural Awakenings magazine, you'll find like so many different people who are all experts on meditation and yoga and everything and nutrition and whatever. And this is the way. This is what you got to do. And it's like there's so much stuff out there. And <laughs> it's like because uh, I was a person that I would I was trying to do like, as much as I could. You know, like I would try different things and see if it was for me. And um, and there's like so many things that are just like, it's just like the same thing with a different name or, or you know, just something that's like, just, I don't know. It's, it's, so it's hard to really say, like if you're, I think for like the average person out there who, who's interested in, in stuff like this, like a potential uh, spiritist maybe, <laughs> you know, that it's, it's hard because there's so much different information out there and everybody is an expert yeah. about it, <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and uh, and people expect different things too. Mm. And, and some people are really good marketers, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. like some people are really good at marketing and making themselves like, yeah. oh, look how happy I am. Like, you know, uh, you know, like, I don't want to say anything bad about anybody, but like, like I was watching like Doreen Virtue, and she like has a house in Hawaii, you know, and, I don't know and it's like she does her weekly like card readings on YouTube. Uh -huh. and it's, it's like a, it looks like a good life, you know. <laughs> like I would want, I would want that life, you know. And it's like, well, so, I better do what she does and. You know? It's all perspective. What is, what are, you, are we looking for when we are uh, in our um, spiritual path? What is it that we are looking for? Are we looking for a phenomena? That would be easy to find. Easy. And when Spiritism says, like, well, it's going to take a lot of patience and hard work. <laughs> you know? Like, uh, is, is that, is that attractive? <laughs> no. I'd like no. to make a, a few comments on what you were talking about of uh, practice of mediumship and channeling outside of Spirit Descender. Uh, and then I'd like to make a comment about you know, the general 
response to maybe understanding a spirit who's not so nice or enlightened uh, versus one who is. So a couple notes. Um, number one, we know that there it's, it's I'm just going to use some words, I don't know if they're the most appropriate words, but it's safer to get a pure uh, the purity in your communications when you're in a, a controlled environment, and these are just words I'm using to help set the state, like a spirit center. Because there's disincarnated spirits, directors, who run these meetings. Right? So it's, it's planned, it's grandly orchestrated, uh, and the messages are generally pure. And there's a team of people focused in their own personal lives and as a team when they come to the center to, to do that work. Um, you know so that's the purity part. What's, what's interesting right? though, in the very next paragraph, Kardec says that spiritist meetings meant for spiritist communications do not always present the best conditions for obtaining satisfactory results. No, so not, not even at a center. Yeah, even a spiritist center, we have yeah. we have problems. You know. And why is that? So there's a few. We may have some other feedback, but um, uh, part of it can be the team, and uh, you know where where they are, where they idle, what are their thoughts, you know, they're leaving their troubles at the door, some of this, um, do they work properly together, you know, as one, or is a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, who's the winner, and I'm better than you, types of scenarios, that can break down those meetings very quickly, um, so just some other feedback that I've learned from uh, people that do that work, uh, I'm not one of those people, um, so I can't comment uh, much more than that. So, so I wanted to use that as a basis that um, certainly you can, it's the best effort foundation being in a spirit of center with the grand plan being orchestrated by Thank you for saying that beyond because humans. tomorrow, just a parenthesis, tomorrow in the book Missionaries of the Light, I will talk about the first five chapters and it talks about the, the settings in a spiritist, the mediumistic meeting. Beautiful. So we can learn more about that and they are, there are real dynamics associated with that. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to comment on um, is, you know, there, there are some basics that we can use as we receive communications, whether it's in another location or you're standing at the bus stop, as you described. You know, and you can use general logic. You can use general interpretation of, look, are these good messages? Will they be, this information, will it help me in some way, right? Would it benefit me in some way? Or would it be agitating someone else? Would it be agitating me? So it's, it's kind of, if you use that type of thinking, you'll, you'll be able to understand whether this is, you know, a, a spirit who's just playing games or whether there's someone, you know, a spirit that's, that's pure in a way trying to guide you, right? So if the intent is the results of something good, positive, helpful, um, then generally observe it, right? Yes. And maybe even action it. Uh, when it has a tendency not to be that, well then, then those are also messages that we all receive regularly. Uh, and I think there's a bit, just the basics of maybe how to identify um, some core differences. When you see someone agitated and argumentative in a, in a channeling meeting, well, you know, that's a, that's a flag in itself. You, you know, just, you can see it. I almost, how am I going to be helped by this? For us, though, like, like, let's just say that this group one day we're here studying and we become a mediumistic group Hope, one day. Hopefully. Which is, which is really like hopefully. one of our, our ulterior motives we have for starting a study group like this. We need, we um, need a mediumistic yeah. meeting in English. Please. So let's just say that, like, like in the future, in like a, two years in the future, maybe we're sitting around a table and we're trying to like have communication, we would probably be like pretty happy like to have one of these low order spirits come just for the fact that we like got a communication. You know, we'd probably be like pretty happy about it. You know, oh, I would be prepared. You know, like that's like that's like not not that not that that's what we want. But I'm just saying mm -hmm. like that we would right. we could learn a lot just from that. Like yeah. just from like getting even like a bad communication is still like something we could Absolutely. observe. We could oh, study it. We, so could, we could pick it yeah. apart. You know, we could ask questions and see what yeah. we get from it but you know because yeah, the goal is not to uh, to wait to hang out and with the spirits and to listen to blah 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 stories there is a meaningful there is a there is a goal in those meetings so yeah i mean in, in the next chapter we talk about um that if uh, if somebody is a disbeliever and comes comes to the spiritist center um and they see a frivolous meeting 
that they're more likely to leave less convinced than when they arrive. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. so that's another thing too. You know, um, I was going to just put this out there on, on item four. Like, do we sound crazy to normal people? Good question. <laughs> Yeah, good like, question. What's, but what's normal? Like, what's yeah. normal though? It's like, a definition of my normal. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> well, you guys seem pretty normal because I don't know you that well. Yeah. You know, we you, did, you we just met for the first normal. time today. <laughs> so. We'll see on that so. side, you know, I think a lot of people just feel comfortable with it. Especially when it confronts their dogma. You know, their programming is a huge problem. Yeah. At least that's what I'm finding with having an awakening and witnessing miracles and beautiful things. and. There's things that still keep triggering me off to pull me back away from that light, and I struggle with that stuff. It's, I'm just very happy I found you guys because it's very. It's the first time I've ever heard anybody because talk about these things. Because we are crazy that, enough to. It's the first time I've ever <laughs> talked to anybody that I'm like. I don't have to say that word. These people are all exactly right. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's even stranger when you leave here and then you go back to, you know, <laughs> you know it's, it's like, you're like, oh my God. Back like, to Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> my coworkers are like, what do you, what do, you do at, at night? I'm like, well, I have these friends. They talk to dead people. <laughs> <laughs> I see dead people. Yeah. It's very cold. <laughs> it is very cold. Come on. That's because that's that's they're here. Yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> the exorcist. So, so. I lived in my life, like for, for many years, I had a double life. Mm. I had a double life. I was in a uh, TV show and radio business, like double life. It was a meaningful life, very spiritual, very truthful and another one <coughs> very shallow very artificial it's it was totally double life i was feeling miserable i was feeling horrible and i said i i would have to choose and i did i'm here but show business it was pretty tough i had to live this double life for many years yeah you know i was i was having a conversation with somebody last night because, um, you know, I'm doing this stuff on Facebook, and so people are kind of seeing it. And it's like, it's not because I'm trying to convert anybody, but, you know, and I was telling my friend last night, I said, I'm not trying to, like, make you a spiritist or, or anything, but what I would, like, hopefully, like, the, what would be great is, is if I could, like, inspire somebody to, like, start to become a better person, you know. Um, and, and, but we were talking a little bit about, like, because this person is, is a Christian, and I said, well, you know, it's, it's in your own religion, like, that they're talking to spirits, <laughs> you know, and reincarnation is in the Bible. It's just, you know, so I was, like, telling her a couple of stories I read from the gospel, and she's like, well, that's how you interpret it. And I'm like, I'm like well, you know, I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm really not trying to convince you, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm sorry, but, but, um, yeah, it's, that, you know, like, it never ends. If I was more educated in this stuff, I could probably bring up more examples and more examples. And As Kardec was, says, it, that, that wouldn't change Mm -hmm. person's mind yeah. to be yeah. ready to receive right? well and the person I don't believe is like a total disbeliever like like mindset on disbelief mm -hmm. but just sort of was like a little bit curious and asking me you know mm -hmm. but there's there's others like like <laughs> my parents were like oh you know our friend saw your thing on Facebook she was asking about you and these Brazilians and <laughs> she, she's Brazilian too and, she, and they were like she's praying for you <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Like, That's thank excellent. you. Yeah. Thank it's you. interesting that that all of that um, that we just discussed, and that Jesus rose from the dead and came back and talked to his disciples in a spirit form, manifested mm -hmm. himself, and yet we're all uh, those. That's because those, Jesus was those, those, that, those religions, and I'm I'm Christian. I'm, I'm <laughs> baptized. Uh, I'm confirmed in a Catholic church. But there's no core education associated with that whole aspect, right? There's, and I get, you know, the love and the kindness and all those, those uh, virtues, great. But again, there's a total skipped over this, you know, this spirit uh, component. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, also, uh, I don't know where, may, I think this keeps coming up. Three days before Jesus died on the cross, he said, others will come. They will continue to talk about my teachings 
and extend the teachings beyond. And I think there was reference to spirit, uh, disincarnated uh, entities. This was and this was from Jesus, right? So there's I don't know, but there may be some reference to this written in the Bible. If anybody knows, again. It's not honed in on and expanded on, right, in the dogma of, of the Catholic Church or what have you. You know, they, they have their own program or uh, curriculum, if you will, for that education. But yet, there was a path that, that exists there that could be extended to cross over with what we're yeah. studying here you, you in a more refined form. What's really tough, though, is I find, like, when I talk to um, Christians... They don't like the fact that we're using Jesus and Spiritism because that's like their God. Mm. And when I talk to non-Christians, they don't like the fact that we're talking about Jesus because they don't want to like they don't want that Christian like you know they right. associate that with the Christian. They have dogma. the narrow-minded idea of Jesus yeah. that we don't have. The other thing is when you were saying uh, right now when you're talking, I, I like I was thinking that like Kardec says. In order to stop spiritism, you have to stop the spirits. And what we are talking here today, in the future, it's going to be part of daily life. Because it's a long scient life. scientists will prove the spirits in lab. Scientists will prove that what the spirits are saying... And not, not only in the spiritism movement through the mediums of the spiritist movement... Who here have ever read the book Seth Speaks, the book of sex? Seth, the spirit, and that has nothing to do with spiritism. Who ever read Michael Newton, the psychologist that created the Life Between Lives uh, school? Where we, he says, he was skeptical, doctor, and he says, I have no knowledge of spiritualism or any segment of spiritualism. And just through uh, uh, hypnosis. So clients are describing the life in the spiritual realm just like the spirits book. So it is everywhere. It is not only one segment. It's not segregated. It's not a, like a tribe. It's not a... It's everywhere. It's uh, how the A Course in Miracles was given to that doctor. Mediumship. And so many others, right? The the what is the other, the law of one, Ra, the law of one. Same thing. A group of of engineers got together. They created the uh, mediumship meeting, and it was a serious one, kind of a uh, scientific science style observation, very methodic, blah blah blah. So this truth is everywhere. This is not something created by spiritism. It's just like. When, a, when Einstein revealed this natural law, any theory, that it was not his creation. It was just that he tapped into a natural law. And we are now here talking about natural laws, which is the life of the spirits, the continuation of life after death, natural stuff that so many of us, uh, resist and try to close their eyes. I don't want to learn this. I don't want to know about this. But it, so I, I, I'm stuck on this now because it's very profound. So you can talk to your friend. Well, didn't Jesus come back in the spirit and talk to his friend? And don't people still praise Jesus because he still exists somewhere, but it's not incarnate? Oh, so he's a spirit. If you think about how simple and profound that is. Then you can just stop there and go, ah, what are they going to say? I don't believe Jesus now? I don't believe in Him and His Word and, and the Bible must be wrong? So, again, there's, it's kind of the point where the theory exists of a scientist and the other scientist tries to prove or disprove. And it evolves, it exists, and keeps existing and growing because it can't be disproved. So I think the, the good in, in, about this is whether your friend gets that or not, you can use Jesus as a reference and the Spirit. Part, um, eventually it's just going to catch up because again we're, we're still showing and we're still understanding that it can't be disproven that's why it still exists and it's growing yeah, I, I think a way um, maybe I can now that the way of approaching that conversation uh, could be instead of trying to explain those passages where it, it is 
according to them, your interpretation that that's the spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, ask before before even you say before you even say anything. Ask like, how do you interpret this, and see what I, because most of the time, uh, you know, people don't have a, an idea, but we, I mean, we even we as people, we're very eager and ready to contradict whatever it's uh, said to us, <laughs> but we don't really have a, a propositive idea. So it may, you know, it may come in easier. It okay, like my ex-wife. yeah, I, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I, I can't. The, the person can't really say something, um, then they may be, you know, more open to. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are like want to reject everything that you throw out to them, but they have nothing really to offer them. Exactly. Own, too. So exactly. It's like, you know, I mean, I'm not, not, I don't blame them. Like, it's like, you yeah. know, I, I, I happen to have like the cheat code for, for spirituality, like in these books that I've been reading. You know, it's like I, it's like I learn a lot of things, and, and, uh, you know. And before I read it, like, when, even when I read it, I was like, I don't know if I really buy all this stuff, you know. So I, I, I totally, like, can put myself in their shoes in, in a way, you know, like that. But, but um, Yeah, way to counter that with that mm-hmm. for their interpretation. And, and for me, too, it just kind of shows me I, I'm, I need to, like, continue studying and continue edu- getting educated and, and, and everything because I, I, I have a lot to learn. <laughs> my, my journey um, from Catholicism, I mean... I used to question, I said, what would Jesus do? I would, I would put myself in, I can be, you can create like Jesus and heal your fellow man like Jesus. And that's a big yeah, step. Yeah, exactly. Where I was told at that time, you can't, you're can't. you not big enough, you're not uh, holy enough to be anything like God. Mm-hmm. And you, you lose that connection between you, Jesus, mm-hmm. and God. And yeah. Once you think on a bigger scale, then you... you Mm-hmm. You can take use Jesus as a as a tool to see so you can actually grow spiritually. Mm-hmm. It is yeah. it is one of our tasks to dismystify this Jesus, to take this Jesus out of the cross, and to understand that this is was just a very high evolved spirit that knew understand the manipulations of fluids, the manipulation of. It, it chemistry in a level that we don't understand yet and but we will and that's the reason why he came incarnated here to show to us that he was one of ours and and that's the reason why he was like a carpenter to show you know because otherwise if he was powerful as the uh, the Jews was waiting for the Messiah to be to come in all his glory and powerful king and then people would say you know but he was a king that's the reason why way, he was doing this I am, it's not really I can't I have no relation I can't relate to this guy but then he was very poor like had nothing and he was doing all sorts of things to say yeah you can do so I think it's time we wrap up the, the first part it's actually we're overdue I do it every time. But, That's um, fine. But um, because your conversation is more exciting than mine. So we got through one and a half this time. Yeah, we got through almost. <laughs> two. We'll see what we do next week. But, but yeah, next week we'll pick up again with what is spiritism, and then uh, I don't know. We'll just we'll just go and we don't have to end the thing now, right? We okay. Can, yeah. But I'm gonna do my cool thing now for all the people online. It switches to the spirit You are book. fancy. You are fancy. But I'm going to show the video. Later. Later? It's in five more minutes. In five more Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. Got Okay. All right, Manny. We are live. So now we're on to the second half of our program. <laughs> okay. With the Spirits book. So we're not closing. We're going to continue. Show we're going to continue for a few minutes. minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So this is just um, a different book we've been reading for the second half of, of this meeting. Um, it's called it's the Spiritist book from Alan Kardec as well, um, and uh, it's just uh, it's just basically um, like questions that are asked to different mediums, and the spirits speak to the mediums. Um, and he had a very methodological uh, meth- methodological approach approach to it. Method- he, methodological. Myth- <laughs> 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 I got too many syllables in my word. 
<laughs> he, he had, a, he had a, 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 a method to it, and what he did was he there you go. He, um, he had all these these Thank questions. He had a bunch of questions that he he basically wanted answered, and I guess people wanted answered as well. And he sent them out to different spiritist center, different spiritist groups, and different mediums with the same questions. And then they would you know talk to different spirits, and they would get their answers. And then he evaluated all the answers and kind of you know kind of got the truth out of all the thousands of answers from the same questions that he had proposed and then he kind of this is kind of the interpretation of all those control tests right mm -hmm. exactly yeah. so all those so mediums didn't know each other so he would send right. them all questions they had no idea like so and yeah. only when he got the same answer from every one he would accept yeah. that as, as the truth so right now uh this chapter is uh, chapter three um and it's titled creation so it just goes into um, like creation of, of worlds and, and you know organisms and, and people and stuff like that. Um, so the very first question um, or the introduction is the creation of worlds. The universe comprises an infinite number of worlds that we see and even those that we do not see. In addition to all animate and inanimate beings, all the stars that revolve in space and all the energy that fills up space. So that saying, was Kardec saying. Kardec is saying, yeah, this is what the universe is made out of. So, and, um, and let's remind ourselves that the book the book was published in 1857. 1857. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so these were questions being proposed in 1850s. Um, so this is the 37th question of this chapter, and the question was, was the universe created or has it existed for all eternity, just like God? And the Everybody answer, understands the question? Yeah, mm -hmm. good. Okay. Guys that are smart. Yeah, and the answer uh, they gave that that was given was the universe obviously could not have made itself, and if it has existed for eternity as God has, it would not be God's work. So sometimes Kardec will put another note um, after the answer, and here he um, he wrote: Reason tells us that the universe cannot have made itself, and as it could not be the work of chance, it must be the work of God. The only thing I see here, what do you, what do you want to point out to me? The only thing I can see here is that the importance that chance could not design this. That's the only thing. You guys agree, disagree? You guys can disagree here. There is no, we have our own point of view and it's fine. Okay? Is that his view on evolution? He's, he's got a very profound view on evolution. But I mean, yeah, and it goes into it in, in, the, yeah. next, in the next few yeah, questions. Exactly. But this is kind of the, this is kind of the question that everything always goes back to. It's like you know, did we just That's appear true. spontaneously, or did we, or did something create us? You know, it was, right. You know, it's, it, it always goes. This this is the question that everything always goes back to. You know, it's, right. so it's saying that obviously you can't create something from nothing. I guess mm -hmm. you can say. Um, so there would have to have been some kind of force or energy, however you want to. You know, interpret the word God. There had to be some kind of energy or force or, or being that started right. everything to come into existence. Yeah. The word really here for us, God is the word that we use, but we can translate to whatever word we prefer: source, divine intelligence, energy, energy. Kardec always uses providence. Yeah, you know, divine be, providence it's, it's, too. I'm thinking about that. You can yeah. use Jesus or whatever vibration. That, mm, that. Not in this case, because we, well, Jesus created planets. He was able to create planets, but um, this, the teachings we get from the spirits, we do not confuse Jesus with God, like the church. Jesus uh, is okay. yeah. Jesus is the creation of a God. Jesus is just it's like us, but. In a higher level. Like a hundred years from now. Yeah, a hundred years, yeah, right. A <laughs> million years. Yeah, even, even exactly. Himself, even himself, he didn't confuse himself with God. Right. Even if you exactly. read through. Yeah. Uh, I, I see something else um, in this answer. Um, is that if you think about it, spirits, even these high um, elevated spirits, who we are getting the answers from, uh, or are they getting those answers from? They don't know everything. So in the if, 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 you, that, if you read the answer, they're saying, okay, we don't know, and this is like the best 
approximation to that huge question that we can get. So um, <clears throat> we're not we're not talking to God. God is not answering these questions. It's it, it's spirits who uh, are more evolved than we are. Thus, they know more than we do, but they don't know everything. So there's you know God is the God. It's also at the level of our capability to understand, right? right back to the human factors. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so all of those dynamics play. You know, we still have to interpret it and then understand the best we can. Uh, there's a guarantee that every one of these questions could be at another level of intelligence, but it wouldn't help us in any way, right? So we need to yeah. go from our level up a level. Uh, and that's... that's that the whole cosmos exists. So yeah. we elevate. Uh, one of our roles would be each of us is to help others that are in low order, right? And we're uh, helping each other grow. And this never ends. So yeah. it's like the help we're getting from our disincarnated friends. Helping each other from suffering and, and yeah. disharmony. Yeah. From yeah, understand their human to human. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's all there are better so. ways to live life, a happier life understanding right what it's how nature works how things work can i show the video now no. <laughs> come on i have to stop the stream okay bye <laughs> any announcements before we close tomorrow we have the missionaries of the lights mm -hmm. talk with me <laughs> eh. <laughs> it's gonna be funny oh wait funny not funny <laughs> not funny it's not gonna funny. be fun we're gonna talk about spiritual vampirism we're gonna mm -hmm. talk about mediumistic meetings uh, also the atmosphere in the spiritual center versus the atmosphere outside the spiritual center what happens when we leave the spiritual center Pennsylvania do we do we keep the same connections the same vibrations the same frequencies or what happens when we go home and other things, other stuff. Very interesting, high level, high level conversation. Not mine, but Andre Luis. <laughs> My level conversation. I wonder if anybody even watches these streams like all the way to the very end. But if they are watching, remember we're watching. We're reading What Is Spiritism next week. What Is Spiritism? We have a WhatsApp group. Great. You can join our WhatsApp group, and we also have a meetup, and we send out the um, reading. So if you want to get a copy of the readings, you can contact Steve or Cynthia. And uh, we'll give you a copy of the readings. And, and uh, there are people that see you do the very end because they told me. And uh, we meet here Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. There's also a meditation at 7 p.m. if you can make it for that here at the mm -hmm. Spirit Center. And it's all free. Mm -hmm. It's all, all right? free. Right? So thank you for watching and uh, see you next week. Same bad time, same bad.